What's up, Patch? What you doing, buddy? Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, three days away. I'm Todd, Sassy's in there. Uh, actually working from home, get a little overtime. Um, just thought I'd uh, get you guys caught up with what we've been doing. Um, we haven't uploaded uh, any videos lately, so I apologize about that. Um, most of our efforts been at a barbecue channel, so I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys wanna go check out what we've been up to lately on the barbecue uh, front. But, uh, Today I just wanted to kind of show you a couple projects that I've been working on and uh, let you know what's going on. So the pool, as you can see, um, that Ray Pack heater is the bee's knees, man. That thing is huffing away, it's efficient. Uh, it's made right here in Oxnard, right where we live, but we can't buy them in California because uh, California, you know, enough said on that. So Sassy actually was able to find a a uh, vendor on Amazon that was willing to uh, mail that to back to California. I literally live uh, 10 minutes from where they put these things together and, and then we can't buy them in California. That's just, that's absurd, that's crazy, and that's the problem that we have with California right now, guys. So, but any, anyway, uh, we love that heater. Um, it's definitely gonna be the go-to heater. If it ever breaks down, we're gonna get another one just like it. I should've stocked up, honestly, because it's an awesome heater. Um, we have that, uh, let me show you that barbecue quick disconnect. So, of course, I had a plumber um, plumb in this stub out for a barbecue quick disconnect. And then on, again, on, on eBay, actually, I got this, uh, I think it's a 3 8 outdoor flexible um, barbecue propane line. Uh, it's about a 25 footer, I think. And then, you know, I just plug it up. Um, this side does have a quick disconnect, but uh, you know, it just, you screw it on there and boom. And when I'm not using it, you know, I unscrew it, coil it up and I cap it off there. Uh, if you can see here, as you can see the temperature I have it set for is 82. And it gives you the water temperature, which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, you know, it's a nice cool day. Um, and, uh, the water's beautiful. It's not going to get higher than 62 degrees here. It's kind of coastal weather, but, uh, it's going to be perfect for swimming in. Let me tell you guys, I, I love it here. It's, uh, early spring and we can swim in a pool already. That's awesome. Another little shot of our setup here. Uh, yeah, we got a video of uh, me putting that together. You can go back and check it out if you want. Uh, I'm not going to really get into it here, but it was easier than I thought. i well, fly there. And one thing I am going to do is, uh, let me show you. So I went with this uh, Hayward skimmer here um, and plumbed that in with just one line going to the sand pump and filter. Uh, basically abandoning these two Intex uh, returns here. But... I saw a video somewhere on YouTube University, and what I'm gonna do is drain the pool about a foot and a half. I'm gonna tap into this return here and put a T right here with, you know, shut off valves and stuff, but I'm gonna put in a T right here and then going back. So hopefully that will capture a lot of the particles that are in the water column you know, because that skimmer does a great job getting anything off the surface. But once that uh, debris floats down into the water column, you know, it's really hard, uh, other than vacuuming, you know, just it's not pulling it out. Um, so, plus uh, I've seen that video where it really seemed to somehow improve the overall water flow by open, even though you, you have that single one there, you know, just somehow magic of uh, fluid dynamics, you know, who knows. That's gonna be uh, my plan with the pool. 
Uh, this spring, you know, it's probably the only major mod I'm going to do to it. Uh, the deck's holding up great. Um, probably need to just uh, re-oil uh, that thing, preserve it a little bit. Uh, let me show you what we did with our Yoder loaded witch top. All right, so what you got here is a smoke collector and a five inch inner diameter smokestack that's total height from the bottom of the collector to the top is 42 inches. So what this does is it helps it breathe a lot better. Now, there's the factory stack and part of the factory, uh, you know, whatever they call it, heat plate or whatever. We ended up cutting that in half. Now we ended up ditching it all together. Um, so essentially the original Yoder had that little tiny stack, three and a half inch in, in diameter coming out of this spot here. And then, you know, only going up, you know, maybe, you know, 25 inches or something like that. Uh, these Yoder loaded Wichita's were kind of known to have hard drafting issues, um, didn't breathe very good. Um, I, in fact, I think one of the websites, they called this a charcoal smoker, probably because of that fact. Um, now it's an honest wood burning offset smoker with this uh, collector. Now my cousin, Nathan Munoz, fabricated this up uh, using my design. Uh, he modified it a little bit uh, and it's made out of T1 quarter inch there. It's probably way too thick there. I think it's almost like three eighths, uh, way overkill. But you know, this is a prototype and uh, look at these welds guys. Not bad on the welds, I'd say. Let me show you the inside. Well, it's hard to see it, but the whole the whole concept with this collector. So basically, we got the firebox right here, guys, um, and you can see the firebox from the cook chamber here, right? Um, and what we did with that factory baffle plate, it kind of ran across this whole surface here and had holes in it and it was kind of like a tuning plate and it was basically a, a bottom from bottom up kind of smoker and then it went at an angle and came out of this little hole here so what we're trying to do is create more cross flow on the bottom and top of the grate more even and to be collected by that manifold there and then right up the chute okay so um, there's some manufacturers that are starting to go with just a basic heat deflector right at the end here. Some of them even building shelves and they put their water pan on top of it. So what I did is I took some leftover uh, quarter inch uh, and I just laid it there to test it out. Um, we did some fish the other day. In fact, that video should be posted on our barbecue channel right now. And, uh, and I did a, a biscuit test. Uh, and so far, the overall flow works so awesome. Guys, it's just an awesome flowing machine now. It's a true stick burner um, in every sense of the word. And for a kit uh, that you can make yourself or get a hold of me, and uh, we'll make one for you custom made, um, you know, broken down flat in a box. Maybe you get your own pipe, uh, but we can send one to you. And uh, let you know, get a hold of me, and we'll talk about uh, costs and all that stuff. But it is well worth it, guys. It just changes this smoker so much; uh, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, guys, that's kind of what's been uh, going on with us. Uh, a few projects around the house, getting the pool opened up, uh, all that stuff. We're also selling our toy hauler. Um, if you're interested, it might still be for sale. Get a hold of me. It's on eBay right now. It's a 2020, uh, 23 SA by uh, Attitude Toy Haulers. Um, we're going to get a, uh, a better product. That's why we're selling it. I think we're going to go with an outdoors RV. Um, we really want that uh, true four season kind of experience with the comfort that it brings you. So, at any rate, guys, uh, hey, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to go ahead and go in there and enjoy a little bit of coffee because it's still the morning. <laughs> and I need my coffee. So, um, be sure to subscribe, guys, to this channel. and. Uh, comment down below with your experiences and if you want to see more projects with the smoker let me know otherwise go on over to greenhorn barbecue beer and check out uh, our fabrication video of that uh, yoder smoke collector all right okay guys see you later